Slabs. 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 Slabs! This is volume two of my video slab set. My name is Tyler Lay. Thank you, my concrete maniacs, for being here to watch this video. Like, subscribe, leave me a comment. I love reading your comments, especially your slab comments. Why in the world do we put reinforcement inside slabs? Well, reinforcement keeps our cracks small and also stops our slabs from faulting. Here's an overview of a slab, and you see this thing in the middle? That's a crack. And we don't want that crack to be large. We want to keep those cracks small. If cracks get large, it can cause something called faulting. Faulting is when one side of the slab drops compared to another one. It's no good. You can stub your toe, you can trip, you go badump when you drive your car, and it's ugly. It just doesn't look right. That's the faulting. Here is a slab in practice. Look at that big old crack. It's faulted. It's no good. They needed more reinforcement. Ah! There's many ways to do this. You can use rebar, wire mesh, and rebar mats, or fibers. All of them are possible solutions. Let's start out with rebar. Rebar is typically tied in mats like this. They're this checker type pattern or crossing type pattern. And the bars are put up on something called a chair because we want those bars to be in the center or in the upper third or so of the slab. And every single time one of those things cross, we're going to tie them together to help hold them together. And a lot of people say, how much rebar do I use? Well, a 3 8 inch diameter bar at 18 inches on center, that's a number three bar. At 18 inches on center is a typical number that a lot of people use for slabs on grade. Now let's talk about wire mesh and rebar mats. Now why do we use these or have these? Because a lot of people don't like getting all that rebar and don't like the labor of putting them down and tying them all together. So what these things do is they pre-weld or pre-fix these things together. See these little things here? See these little things here? Those are welds that hold those things together. Wire mesh, as you can see on the left, and rebar mats on the right. We have wire mesh. It's typically smooth bar. It's not as strong or as stiff. It's less expensive as well. And when people just bring you reinforcement or don't talk much about it, they're usually bringing you wire mesh. It's not my favorite stuff. Rebar mats, that's deformed bars. That is strong, that is stiff stuff. It won't bend, it is more expensive. And it's what I'd prefer if I was building a slab and wanted to use some kind of mat system. Now let's talk about fibers, one of my favorite things here. These are these materials you add to the fresh concrete, and during the mixing, it breaks them up and disperses them in the concrete. Here is some fiber-reinforced concrete. If you zoom in really closely, see those little hairs? Those are the fibers, and they are awesome. Once that concrete cracks, those fibers help keep it small and tight and tough to get that crack to open up. Here is a picture of an actual structure. On the right, it, it was poured just with rebar by itself, and on the left, it has rebar plus fiber. And look at that crack. Big over there, and it gets much, much smaller. Actually, about 50% smaller in size are what those fibers can do. It's pretty amazing and awesome how they're able to help. Now, if you want to learn more, you can watch this video, What is Fiber Reinforced Concrete? I'll link to it above. And so people ask me, cool, fibers, can fibers replace mesh? Oh, great question. And I say, yeah, I've used them. About four pounds per cubic yard of, of macro synthetic fibers are, can be used instead of mesh. The macro is a big deal. Those are more structural fibers. And yeah, they can be done and they can be used. They're awesome. But can I replace rebar with fibers? That's another good question. It really depends on what the rebar is doing. So you have to kind of know what your structure needs to do, it's not an easy yes or no answer. But I have done it a lot in the past on heavy use industrial slabs. I've used between five and seven pounds per cubic yard of macro synthetic fibers and no rebar and they've performed like a champ. Just awesome. Some been in place for more than a decade. Great, great, awesome slabs that have done well. Rebar and fibers, though, are a amazing combination. If you need to keep cracks super tight, super small, you hate cracks like me, that is an awesome combination, and this can reduce your crack sizes by more than 50%, which I think is awesome. So are there other cracks out there that I need to design for or watch out for? And we're going to talk about reentrant corners. A reentrant corner is a corner that's on the inside of a slab. Yeah. The corner on inside of slab. What's that? Well, let's look at a picture here. So this is an overview of a structure and there's some corners that are on the inside. 
Like, for example, here's a hole that goes through. Here is a column that's penetrating, and here is just a corner that is a corner that happens to be on the inside. Yeah, yeah, when you see these things, your spidey senses, argh, they need to go off, you need to detect them. Let's talk about that hole first. Well, do you see any corners there? Well, I do, I see one, I see another one that's on the inside. I see another one and I see another one and why they're important and matter is because if you don't do something about them, stuff like this happens. You get cracking off the corner because those are stress concentrations, those are weak parts of the slab. Now let's talk about this column up here at the top of you. The column that penetrates the slab it is also a big deal. Those are all corners around the outside that are on the inside of the slab and they can cause problems. There you go. In real life, there is a cracked um, slab because of that column. And then let's talk about our friend, the reentrant corner. Yep, that one right there. That's again a corner that's on the inside and loo, man. Did everything right, everything was awesome, but they didn't reinforce for the, for the reentrant corner. So how do I stop this type of crack? Well, you tie two additional rebars at the corner. Two rebars at the corner. So they look something like this. Obviously, they wouldn't be on top of the slab. They would be in the slab. And again, you want them at the halfway point or the upper third point to help keep that crack small. And so all those places with green check marks would all turn into places with rebar where they will hold those cracks small. It's pretty awesome, right? So what else should I watch out for with slabs or pay attention to? Well, always make sure your slab slopes away from whatever structure you have that you're building or you have around. What I'm talking about, if you have a house and you're building a slab next to it, don't make the slab flat. You're like, what? Why not? I think I should have a flat slab. That's, that's a good thing, right? Well, if you do, you'll get ponds of water that looks like this, can actually come into the building. No bueno, we don't want that, that is not good. So you want a slope, give your slabs a slope. But how much of a slope should I provide? Well, a good estimate is greater than um, 2%, and so like, how do I calculate that? Well, here you go. The change in height over the change in length times 100 is how you get your slope. And so if I have a slab that looks like this, if the change in height is a half an inch over about 10 feet in length, if you do the calculation, 2%, that's what you were looking for. That's awesome. So in summary, we need reinforcement in our slabs. I mean, most of the time here. You gotta pick out what is right for you and what you care about. And you need to use reinforcement at reentrant corners. Remember, those are corners on the inside of the slab to stop cracks that happen. And we wanna slope your slab to control your water, get it away from your structures. Ladies and gentlemen, I am done. I hope you liked this video. If you did, like, subscribe, leave me a comment. I love leaving and reading your comments. And check me out at the book and the gram at concrete.tyler. Take care, everybody. Peace.